Okay, uh, hi everyone, I'm Tian Bing. Okay, um, I mean, I'm coming from Hermo. I will introduce that later. So, first, my topic is React Bella Plat. Can I have a raise of hand of how many, how many people actually know about React Bella Plat? Boiler Plat. How many people know? Okay, then, how many, how many people are actually try, trying with it? You tried it before and you didn't use it or you use it? Hmm, okay. There's no hand actually. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to have a brief introduction about this rare bullet pad. Okay, I'm not actually one of the contributors, but I'm, we, my team is actually using it for now. Okay, so for general knowledge, so as you know, I, when I checked yesterday, Red Jazz have actually 131k star on GitHub, and rare bullet pad have actually 22k. That's around one sixth of the red user. Okay. So about me. So I'm a senior front end engineer from Hermo Domain. So uh, if you are like domestic and you are from Malaysia, maybe you will have a bit Hermo Domain. It's a number one beauty e-commerce company in Malaysia. And I have working with JavaScript for six years. Okay, first few years I'm working on YUI, Yahoo UI interface, which is a legacy framework that no people is using anymore. And then after that, I switched to Angular. And then since last year, I moved up to React. Okay, and I start my React with React Boilerplate. Okay, so what is React Boilerplate? Okay, um, from the name, you can actually guess it. It's a Boilerplate. So, what is Boilerplate? According to Nick Kanit, there's some guy from somewhere. Okay, it's Boilerplate is actually a block of code that you reuse. Okay, or more specifically, is a lot of library that you, you, you are keep using. The same library, the same text stack that you use for each of your project. So what Bellaplate do is they wrap up all these libraries and allow you to get started very fast without setting up each of the libraries manually. Okay, so uh, let's see about Bellaplate. It's actually based on Node.js. Okay, I think most React is on Node.js. And then they use Express as the uh, web server. And then we have Webpack, which is a modular bundler. And act as a task runner. And then it is... React Bellaplace is, is... Okay, let, let me have a brief. <laughs> okay, they have this uh, ESLink. Just ESLink for the Code checker is a linter. And then we have JS for test driven development. We have Bubble for ESC transpile, CSS for loading, CSS loader for loading CSS, and the hot middleware for hot reload. And then they actually have, okay, of course, React and come up with this thing. And then Bellplay already set out all of this for you. Okay, uh, as you might know so far, Bellplay boilerplate is not for a big project. So let's say if you have already have a core base and it's a well developed and use it for several years already. It's not so it, it's not advice to like you just jump to Bellplay and then redo everything. This Bellplay is more for you to start a new project, a small project or a multiple small, small project. Okay, um next. So let's see some of the props. Actually it's some of the features that's provided by Bellplay. They have a uh, hot reloading for reflect your JavaScript and CSS changes immediately. And then they have routing already, uh, bubbles for the transpile for ES6. And then they have quick scaffolding for you to generate components and containers. Uh, ESLink for code convention checking. Link. And then just for test driven. And then internalization using uh, React INTL. And then, okay. So, Bellaplay actually have you set all this with a few commands. Okay, so there's some trade-off, of course. Um, it's easy to get started with just a few commands and everything is running, but it takes time to actually go and understand what each of the library is doing, especially when you are first running with React. That's what happened on us. We do regular play, everything happened magically, and we don't know what happened. Okay, and then everything comes in bundles. So you don't have the option to selectively choose what you want, but you can do it manually to remove those that you don't want. 
and then they don't have a they have smaller community uh, there's few few libraries that's working for react but not working for react black plate but there's always ways for you to contribute and migrate it to black plate anyway and then um, since we our team start with black plate as the first for react by the time we don't know react js we only know react black plate so somehow i get get confused with redux saga i thought that's that is part of react but later on, only I realized that it's, it's not the same thing. It's actually libraries. <laughs> and of course, a lot of black box. Uh, there's some libraries that I still don't really understand. And I don't even realize they are there. Okay, so okay, let's go for some demo. Okay, I'm not going to present something as, as complicated as we just now. It's just a touch, a surface touch using the demo that we have, Black Pet have provided. Okay. So uh, let me have a real demo. So I hope the internet working well. So so to get started from the scratch, from the ground, go to Google and search. Okay, of course, go to GitHub, and then clone. I think everyone know everyone here should know how to do this. And then, okay, just clone. Okay, you see, it, it's actually quite a small package, so it will download in like a few seconds. Okay, after you have download, just let me go back to the slide. Okay, just go into the folder. And then all you need to do is set out. NPN run set out. Okay, they will start to setting up the environment. Okay, this actually is the last command to set out everything. The first and the last command. Okay, while waiting for the set out, maybe we can have a look on the file structure. open because I opened it just now. Okay, um, I think it's too small for you to see, is it? Never mind, I will explain it. Okay, so basically there's few folders. It's, um, they have a server and internal folder which run out the web server and all those uh, script they need. I don't have a clear idea on how it is. And then they have a folder for documentation. And then the main, the main content here will be the apps folder. Inside the apps, you have containers, a components, which is all the components and containers. Okay, since it's a demo project, so they actually have some co demo component and container inside, and you can actually use them, or you can choose to remove them later on. And then images for resource, a test for some basic testing, and then a translation for the IADN, and utils, some utils function also. Yeah, you can add on later on. So this is a basic file structure. I think is almost done. Okay, this question is: Do you want to start a new repository? Yes or no? I tried with Y and I tried with N. They come up with the same thing. So I don't know what happened. That's the black box. Okay, so it's all done. So after you set out everything, what you need to do next is npm start. Yeah, and then the server is up. So this is the server using localhost, uh, fresh down, fresh clone, and set up on the spot. Okay, um, okay, don't worry, I still have much much to go. <laughs> so next. Let's do some demo for structure already. Okay, hot reload. Okay, so I talked about hot reload just now. I think most of people heard of it and actually using it already, hot reload. So when you change something, they will update. Okay, let's go to this is a home page. So I will open the home page. I will search it instead. Home page. And then index folder. 
Okay, index folder is a entry point for all the components and container. We always start with index. And then, this is a patch. So I'm going to do some changes over here. Let's say I change the font size. I will change it at the quite uh, whole section. So, case um, they are using JSS, so can you actually do inline CSS? We're using the modular. Okay, let's say the font size. Font size. Okay, let's say 130 percent. Colon, not semicolon. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Okay, when I save it, you can see the changes on the spot. I don't even go and refresh it or anything, they just refresh. Okay, that's styling. So let's see if we're adding some text. Haha. And I save it, and then so they will refresh almost real time. Okay, that's hurry lock. Hmm. Okay, next. Next level. What I have next is the translation. So I think some, uh, since we are a multinational country, Malaysia and Singapore, multinational, so we always use a lot of syntax. So translation is quite important. So actually, you can see they're having this formatted text. So let's say I want to change this message. So first, you open the, I will go to the file review in slide, sidebar and then you see there will be a message file over here so uh, we will do it modular that means what you, the message you found here should come up here okay this one so where's my patch so when you change this copywriting Is it the correct one? No, sorry. I missed out one step. This is the default message. Okay, they actually have translation file which compile everything together. So let's say this is the ID of this syntax. If you go to outside, there's a translation folder I mentioned just now. And there will be like English. And you search for the search for the ID. You can actually see the same text here. This is the default. Okay, let's change it. And it will up, uh, update. Okay, so that's for changing copywriting. So what if, let's say, um, someday I'm adding more, I'm adding more of the translate, or, or more of the copywriting, and then I want to, and change them two and three with a new ID. Okay, and then at the end of my project, I actually forget how many instant, uh, how many new message that I have an add-on and they are not here okay so uh, don't worry uh, but I play actually come up with some action you can find it in package JSON this is called extract extract intl okay. so let me show you this one the message that we have found just now is around here and when we run the command npn run Extract intl and I save it. Uh, no, run it. Okay, you can see. Okay, the new message actually just pop up. Okay, they will go and find find all the new newly added message and just pop at it here. So you can just at the end of your development, you just need to change this one, pass to your copywriter, ask them to fill in the content. So um. If you want to demo like whether this thing is really work, you can see like yeah they will change. Okay, but the way they change involves some Redux and you can explore it yourself. I will explain about Redux later, and you can go back and try it. Okay, that's about INTL. Next one. Okay, modular and composable CSS. Okay, since it's using JSS, so. You can change your JS CSS compose after you compose. Okay, let's say we have a font size over here. 
Okay, I will going to use some variables, so let's change into bad syntax. And then I want the font size to be, let's say, 100% minus width. Okay, this variable is username. Okay, let's say username.len. L E N G T hash times, let's say, 2 percent. And then just save it. So, when I actually type in something and then the length of user in name is changed, you can see that okay, um, the CSS, the styling actually changed accordingly. So it's composable. Okay. Okay, that's all of it. Next demo. Okay, pretty and yes, link. So, let's say um, I want to add another styling. Go to the bed. Hide this one. Okay, so it's a comma. Let's say a background color. Background color part. Equal to some color. Let's say uh, salmon. I like this color. Okay, but you see when you type something too long, I think this one is it, yeah. They will just start to throw you linter error. So let's make it into multiple line. So, sorry, this one first. Type. New line, new line, and new line. And this one also new line. Okay. Um, you get used to it when you start familiar with the linter. But when something happens, you can actually see the red underline. It's very small. Can you see it? The red underline. So if you hover about hover it, you will see ESLink and actually they're using prettier with ESLink. They're actually tra telling what's the parent. So for this one, it asks you to delete the space. Delete the space, save for this one, same for this one. And then this will be replace space with comma. So, and done, pop, everything done. So what you see is, they will forcefully request you to change your code following their ESLink structure. So by this way, um, you can actually sell a code convention and all the team members using typing the same code. And if you are considered about whether we can configure the, configure the ESLink, there's, of course, some way to configure. Okay, next one. Don't worry, it's the second last already of the demo. Okay, um, so Redux. Anyone using Redux here? Okay, um, oh, there's quite a lot. So, um, Blurplate actually come up with this uh, Redux Integrate in V. It's like closely integrated. <coughs> So what I understand is, what I understand, not sure is the, the facts. They have this index file, action, constant, reducer, and selector. So when you generate a constant, uh, generate a container, they will actually ask you whether you need this thing. When you, give, when you, tell, the, when you tell the black plate you need this, they generate a container with all this file inside. So index is the entry file. Action will define all the, all the action that going to this page. Constant define the variable for the type, and then reducer will be modifying your stat, and selector will extract data from stat and pass it back to index. So let's have a look. Okay, um, if you go back to the file structure, and did, 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 here. So you see, you can see actually there's more than that because they actually modify the template. So there's action, there's index, there's message, there's reducer, and selector. Okay, so what happened is, if you see this, if you see this text input, when you type something, the text come up. It will say, okay, no, it's nothing special. This is a HTML default, <laughs> HTML default text input. But actually, they already have a wrapper on it, and it's not as simple as simply input. So what happening is, if you go to the input, you will see that there are, the value is using username, which is a props. And then on change, 
they will trigger this function and this function this function will actually dispatch an action okay dispatch will be like uh, firing an action so they're firing change username and change username is actually import from action so let's go to action inside action you will see that each action they will have few things first one um, compulsory is the type they need to define a type and then it's some others value it might be one might be more just the parameters so the uh, variable import from constant just to define the constant so we don't miss out a bit and then when you when you index dispatch an action your reducer will listen to it and when they do it they will check for the type okay let's say just now change username so it's, since it's import from the same constant it will be 100 percent the same value and what they do is they get the value from username and inject into draft oh sorry draft and draft is actually a duplicate of stat after that they will handle and set into the stat so in our case home page using the home stat uh, they're mapping in the index so your selector which will get home stat username this map select home username they will constantly get from this one and then if you go back to your index you will see that so this value import from selector and they will use for max stat to props into username so then map this value into your stat and then at the end we will use this value in our input okay ins inside the input so actually every time you type a single character they will run through one cycle one cycle of how i mentioned just now the reduct cycle Okay, to test it, maybe we can like, let's say I add alert here. Add alert with the action.username as a value. So, let's say every time I change the text, they will trigger the alert. Yeah, this two thousand. Okay, let's move it. So, every time you type something, they trigger the reduct cycle, but it's still so smooth that you would you would imagine that it's just a normal text input so this is the redux that i understand and then the next demo will be redux saga so on top of redux they actually come out with the they actually come together with saga so um, what i understand is saga will be the side effect that's mean on, on on some action they will trigger some other side effect some other action going at the back as a side so um so what happened is i think uh, okay there's a action there's a saga action trigger here which is when i enter they will actually call the api so what's happening here is when you enter they will trigger form submit submit what is it index submit so on phone submit they will dispatch another action which is log repo and this log repo is actually import from the action of apps apps container so we need to find container apps and the action yeah and it's here so this function actually calling they will dispatch this log repos constant log repos constant so it's import the constant is import from x container so let's find so container apps and saga very concern so they define here this is a value the string but we just need to remember the variable so what happened is there's a inside container apps reducer they are listening to this value and on on change of this value on trigger of this action they will set the loading set error to false loading to true and the data to false okay this is if following the redux structure this order it they return the value selector pick the value and pass back to index but at the same time saga is actually working so if you search here 
Let's do a search with the variable name. Oh, there's so many. And then Saga, Saga. Yeah, this one, Saga. Okay. Is it too small? So inside Saga, they're actually something, they are taking letters of this thing. So I treat it as they are listening to this value. When this one is triggered, they will trigger this action. And this action will fire. What they do is they will get the value username from the same from the same letter that I used for index just now. So they get the same value, exactly same value, and then they pass into the URL and they fire a fire the API. This API will get the repos of this username, the repos of this user, and return to you. And the next thing they do is they will put they will fire they dispatch another action which is called a repos loaded. So same thing again. They will call the they will dispatch the action and then reducer will listen to it. So let's go to container apps reducer. Okay. So they are calling this repo. If you go to action, you can see the type they use is. I think I need to show. Container again, apps, and then constant. No, action. Action. Okay, so there were the, the, the variable that they use is this block repo success. And if you go back to the reducer, block repo success is this one. So they actually set the data, set the login to false, and set the username. So what you see just now is when you when you enter from submit, trigger an action, they will fire loading. And while they are loading, they trigger Saga at the same time. And Saga will call API, get the data. And after API get the data, they will fire success. So, so what you can see is um, Safari. Okay, so you see, when you tap, they will trigger the reducer redux cycle. When you enter, they will trigger saga, redux saga. And then you see the loading. This is a, that's the loading facts. They call the API. API return data and they set the data. Okay, so that's actually two actions being triggered. So this is the redux saga. So all of these features actually come default by React Ballet Play. We freshly download a flashy clone, set up, and use on the spot. Okay, this is the all my demo. Okay, um, so next thing I I would like to share will be um, our experience, our team, what our team learned from this variable play. Okay, let me full screen. Okay, ever since we implement variable play, we actually standardize our code because previously uh, we have we're doing on Java and everything, and then different people doing different code. When they come together working as, as a team, uh, the code is like totally personalized. Everyone has their own style. But since we implement YesLink, all the under, underlying red line actually enforces to standardize our coding method. And we actually modify the default YesLink to fit our need. And then it's easy to set up. Okay, last time we are using uh, Yi framework and then topping it out with Angular plus jQuery. And then it will take us like almost one week just to get a new member to set up their development environment. But ever since we changed into uh, React Ballet Play, okay, the day we have an interns coming in, and then we only take like less than 10 minutes to get her to start up the whole development environment. And she can actually start to working on this the next hour after a short, short briefing. And then it's lightweight. So last time we running on Vagrant, we also tried um, Docker, but this one is definitely faster than that. We don't need to reserve memory. We don't need to reserve RAM. Okay. Okay. Next thing is because previously we were working on SAS, SAS style synthetically awesome style sheet. So we actually implement SAS into Black Plate also. I know, don't know whether it's a good approach because um, they, they already come with the modular CSS, but we actually override it with uh, another CSS. But this worked for us and it's convenient, so we end up this method for now. And then we're actually trying to implement Material UI recently. 
and it's quite okay so far. We should come up with our own global utils to set our reusable function, global style to set global styling, and global scope to set our value. Actually, we should use the, the stat, the home stat just now, but uh, global scope is easier. We don't need to dispatch action everything. I, don't, I still don't know whether this is a correct and appropriate approach, but this thing works for us uh, since we are still noob on Verlaplet. And then the last one is, I will say is, we have a better development and experiment because, okay, let me show you some demo. So, a demo again. So last time we have our Android developer, he's working on Java, and we have our, we have our iOS developer, she's working on React Native, or version. And then we have our web developer. They are using uh, Re Framework plus Angular plus jQuery. And then, someday, my CSO, CEO, CTO, he came in and then he said, okay, let's set up, this real play is good, let's set up a React Native Valley Play. So actually, inspired by this, that one, he get, he get a React Native environment and start to add on all those web pad and make it into React Native Valley Play. And then, Android developer and iOS developer moving to the new, new environment, which is using React Native Valley Play. And after seeing that they are working fine, the app web team also migrated from Angular to React. We haven't migrated totally, but we are uh, in the progress. Uh. And so now, oh, my whole team is actually using React just now. Okay, yeah, almost all. Eh, totally all. But this is not, not the truth, the, everything. Uh. Actually, two of them are using React Native, and we are doing React. But Okay, as, as what React, what React announced in their articles, they are not trying to, they're not trying to learn once, use everywhere. What they, what they introduce is learn once, write anywhere. So that's me, React, we, our web developer can actually jump in and help with the apps team to develop their apps. And the apps team can actually come to the web team and help us. But um, the code is not reusable because the way they render is different and there's even Android and iOS, they are not totally the same. There's still a lot of work around we need to do. But what's real is, is we, it's easier to learn, learn the other one. It's actually to hop from here to there and they are very similar already. Just some little parts on the index file, index part. Actually, that's because the author want to remain, what is it? They want to have good developer experience while remain good user experience on the native platform. That's why they do this. But I'm very okay with this. And as a conclusion, no, at the end, I will say this, will, this is the people, those people who contribute to React Black Play in GitHub. And uh, I'm not one of the contributors, but hopefully someday I will contribute to this. And if anyone is interested, you can actually go and join them. And that's all. Any question? No question. Is this a sign of no question? <laughs> Questions? Yeah. yeah. Is there any styling library? How do you have you styled your CSS? How do you styling? Okay. Um. For us, at first we are doing. We're using style component. Style component come together with uh, React Blackplate. But we found that uh, like uh, extremely troublesome, and I, I know that's good. We try to reuse the same style component for React Native and React, but we but the result is not so promising. They might they run out, and then some styling for web is not usable in apps. And at the end, we find like okay, this thing is not so good yet, or we just don't know how to use it. So at the end, our app team actually do their own styling and the web thing actually go back to the old way, which we use as a SS. Yeah, that's what, happen, what happening on us. I'm not sure whether that's the good approach, uh, but that's what we're working. Yeah, is that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Any more? <laughs> okay, that's right, quite thank it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay, so thank you.